So this video is going to go over one potential way that you can get terrain for the laser cutter from SketchUp. Um, in this process, we're going to do just based on free terrain, so we're not necessarily taking it from a geolocation. We're still working on a good way to have the geolocation when run without crashing. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit of a laggy process, so it's always a good idea to save your work before running any of this. Um, but in order to do this, we're going to use some extensions that are required to download, but they are free to download. So if I go into my extension manager here, the ones that you would need to download to run this is first this Frito lib one. This is required in order to have this joint push pull one be able to run and um, uh, function. And then the other one is Slicer. You can download all three of those from sketchucation.com. They are free to download. You just have to make an account with Sketchucation for them. Um, but these two here are going to help us take our terrain as just some vector face and make it into a 3D solid. And then this is going to help take our 3D solid and make it into those 2D layers that we can make our terrain from. Um, the other extension that we're going to use to just model, free model some terrain is Sandbox, which is already preloaded into SketchUp. I have it right up here in my toolbar. But if you don't have it, you can just right click on the toolbar and then you can just turn Sandbox on so you can model it. Um, so to model some terrain just freely is just right here is create, create it from scratch. And when we go to create it from scratch, you have the ability to set your grid spacing here. I have it set, mine already set to five. And so I'm just gonna go across and I'm gonna make a sort of big piece terrain here and then all the way across or just a big piece across so this is just kind of a 50-ish foot by however many feet i dragged out this way of a completely flat piece of terrain what i want to do next is enter this piece of terrain and then use other sandbox tools to kind of push and pull up different hills and different valleys in this made up piece of terrain so I'm going to hit the space bar to go back into the selection tool. And then I'm going to double click on this piece of grid so that way I'm inside this group and I can edit it. Then in the sandbox, I'm going to use the smooth tool in which I then can start pushing and pulling this up. Right now I have a radius set of 100 feet. So I'm just going to change that to 50 feet. And what this is going to allow me to do is just take different parts or pieces of this terrain and I can push and pull it up or down. And I can even play around with this number a bit more. You don't have to actually click in there. I have a terrain um, where I can make different valleys or depressions and hills into this piece of terrain here. But what this has done is it's just made a completely... 2D vector face that moves up and down on this piece of land. So I can't actually export this into something that can be sliced into different layers because it's not a actual solid just yet. So I'm going to hit the space bar again to end this command. And while I'm still active in the group, this is where I'm going to use my joint push pull tool. And I'm going to use the vector push pull, which is going to allow me to take this 2D vector and make it into a three-dimensional solid. I'm just going to move this sandbox tool up here into the toolbar and then click on the vector push-pull. In here, there are two options that we need to make sure we are aware of or make sure that we are using. The first is that we are pushing and pulling on a specific axis. In this case, we want to do on the Z axis or this blue face. So since I already had done this before, it remembered last time that I did it based on the Z, but I just want to make sure I have that Z clicked. And then I also want to just look in the more options and I want to have it directly go to a plane. So if I don't have that option selected, when I go to do a push pull, it will bring it as a solid. I'll hit enter to make it, 
But what it's going to just do is pretty much just pull it through a complete thickness and I still just have a wonky wave on the bottom and that's not what I'm looking for. So I'm going to control Z to undo that and this time I'll still keep my vertical axis as where I'm pulling it onto but this time I want to project it to a plane. And we can see here when I do it projected to a plane, it's just going to bring it down as a completely flat surface. So now when I click and hit enter to, gener to generate that geometry, it's completely flat on the bottom side of it. So now I have a solid piece of this terrain to work with. And at this point, I can exit the push-pull tool because I now have this geometry that I can slice. Before running Slicer, they are going to require you save your work, um, but it's just going to be a good idea anyway, because I have run into while fiddling around with the tool that it is sometimes a little finicky and will crash the software. So hopefully in this demo, it's not going to do that. But I'm just going to save this as the rain demo two, because I already have a SketchUp model called demo. Then I'm just going to double click outside the group to exit it. And before I actually run Slicer, which is the extension I have listed here, so I'm just going to drag it out a little bit, you need to click on your group or click on your object that you want to slice. If you don't have it selected and you click on Slicer to do it, it is going to warn you you don't have anything selected. So I'll click on it this time. And I'm going to run the slicing tool and it's going to give me some parameters to run. Right now, my object is about, again, 50 feet long this way, which means it's probably a lot of feet tall as well. So I don't want to run this with an eighth of an inch thickness because that is absolutely going to crash it. So I'm going to try five feet in both of these for my spacing. And then what I want to do is leave these both set at zero and centralization on slice is fine. Add references is no. What this is going to do is just put little text to let you know which layer number it is and flatten. I'm going to leave as no for this as well, because I don't want this is going to create a 2D drawing kind of next to it that I then can export to a CNC cutter or laser. Then I'll click OK and I'm going to cross my fingers. Okay, five feet was too much here. But I said I was going to cross my fingers that it wasn't going to crash, and it looks like it didn't crash. So now that I know that five feet was too much in this particular example, I'm just going to undo by with Control Z, click on my object again, and do a slicer. This time, I'll try just uh, six inches. But since I want all of these layers to be right up against each other, my spacing and my thickness should be the exact same. And I'll click OK again. And I'll see this time if it runs a little better. And this gave me a much better result, or at least a result I was looking for a little bit more, in which it's creating just flattened pieces of topography that is then going to kind of give me something that I could either use just in a model for an idea of the concept of my building or potentially send to a laser cutter. What I don't want to do though is flatten this to send to a laser cutter just now because I don't have it scaled necessarily for the laser itself. So I'm going to undo again. This time I'm going to scale my entire piece of terrain for the size I want the baseboard to be on a laser cutter and then do a slice based on the material thickness of whatever I'm going to be using. So first thing I need to do is figure out what I want my scale factor to be. So I'm just going to use the line tool to quickly find out how long it is on this edge. So this is currently 65 feet long. And let's say that the baseboard I'm putting it on, I want this length to be two feet on my base and it's currently 65 feet. So what I'm going to do then is break out a handy dandy calculator and I'm going to find my scale factor by dividing the number I want by the number I have. So if I want two feet, I'm just going to do two divided by what I have, which is 65 feet. Enter. 
And that is giving me my scale factor. And I'm just going to simplify this to 0 0.0308 when I go to scale it. So now in SketchUp, let me undo that line I just drew. I'm going to use the scale tool, click on my group. I'm going to pull it by one of the uniform corners. So any one of these four corners will do. But I'm just going to click and hold. And while I'm holding down that corner, I'm going to type in 0 0.0308. I'm pretty sure that was a number. I already forgot it. And hit Enter. And that scaled it down. It's so much tinier. So I'm going to go into Zoom Extend. So I just zoom in on it. And now if I draw a line from this corner to this corner, we can see that my length in the bottom right is approximately two feet. So I have it scaled now to the size I want my scale model to be. And then when I go into the slicer tool here, for my spacing, I want the spacing to be the thickness of my material. So for instance, if I wanted to make this out of sheets of cardboard, I'm going to make my spacing an eighth of an inch. And then I want the thickness of each layer to be an eighth of an inch. I'll leave the insets alone. I'll leave the centralization alone. I can add references if I want. I'll put this on so you can see what it does. And then I'm also going to turn on flatten, which is going to make a copy of just the two dimensional layers over to the side. So I'll click on yes. And this again process could take a while. So it's always a good idea to save your work before you do this process and also just to wait to give SketchUp a minute or so to run this process. So I'll say go for it and I'll click on no on that option and I'm just going to let it run. Again, it may take a while. It didn't, thankfully, which is convenient. But so this is what those references are meaning in which it's just numbering each one of those layers on that Z axis. So this is layer one, two, three, four, five, and so on. If I zoom out, and I'll even just click on zoom extend so I don't have to zoom out so, so much, what it's done is it's made a completely 2D layer of each one of these different parts or pieces. Some of these layers down towards the bottom, these are all just completely flat squares so that might not be something I necessarily want the laser to cut. These could just be pieces that I cut manually or myself. Um, but if I look at my object from the top, and I make sure too that my camera is set to parallel projection so I don't get any perspective to it, this then is the 2D vector work I can export into AutoCAD and then have the laser cut out with it. I'd also recommend, once I put this into AutoCAD, moving these text onto the pieces themselves. Hold on. What I want to do at this point when I'm getting ready to export it is just delete the 3D model itself. And I just accidentally orbited, because I always get my mouse keyboard shortcuts mixed up between software. So now that I have everything, camera set to parallel. My projection is straight from the top. I'm going to file, export, 2D graphic, and I'm going to have it save as a DWG. And this is going to export it into an AutoCAD based file. It might just take a minute or so to do it. Or I could actually put it in my documents because I wasn't paying attention to where I exported. Yep, it put it in my documents, not on my desktop. That's okay. Is I can open this up in AutoCAD. I can move these pieces around again to save some cardboard. And I can move those texts around also to help make sure that I have. Always open this. Again, this is just a warning saying this wasn't made in AutoCAD. But I can make these pieces of text, if they aren't directly on the piece already, I can just grab this and just move it so that it is, which funnily enough, it didn't even export it in as text. It just exported it in as line work. So I can't grab it like that, but I can just use the move tool. And then these can just be really helpful when I'm assembling the entire piece of topography. Back here in SketchUp, I'm going to control Z to undo 
Because the other thing that's also going to be incredibly helpful for when I'm putting together this entire piece of topography as a 3D model is to be able to look at this on the computer and reference it as well. So that's one way that you can kind of create terrain three-dimensionally from SketchUp and export it for the laser. Um, and then I'm going to work on a video of how to do the same thing using the geolocation with the terrain from geolocations. But as I sort of mentioned, while I was trying that out, I kept getting SketchUp crashing a lot. So I'm going to see if there's a little bit of a different way we can expedite that.